How's it going, y'all? In this video, we're going to talk about how to get blurry backgrounds on your YouTube videos, video podcasts, your vlogs, everything. All right, let's get started. So there are three things you have to focus on in order to get a blurry background. Number one, we need to focus on the aperture of the lens. Number two, we need to focus on the lens itself. And number three, the background. The background is really important. All right, let's start off with the aperture. The aperture plays the key role in giving you the blurry background. So the aperture is represented by an F number. It's also called F-stop aperture. It's the same thing. The lower the F-stop number, the more blurry the background gets. The higher the F-stop number, the more in focus everything is. That's pretty much it. So if you want a lens that's going to give you like a blurry background, you should look for lenses that have an aperture of like, uh, 1.4. Uh, this one is a 1.8 and the lenses have numbers on them. So this lens will say 50 slash 1.4, meaning, Hey, this is a 50 millimeter lens and it has an aperture. The lowest aperture it has is F 1.4. So they always have the lowest aperture number on there. And then depending on if it's a zoom lens, it'll have a aperture of 3.5 to 5.6, meaning at its lowest when it's zoomed, when it's like not zoomed in, the aperture is set to 3.5. But when you zoom it in, it has a, a variable aperture range from 3.5 to like 5.6. So then you can't necessarily get a blurry background as much when you have it all the way zoomed out. And that totally sucks. That's why I tell people that they should get a nice uh, lens like this one here. This is the Samyang 50 millimeter F 1.4. And it's a great lens. It's, it's going to give you that nice blurry background. Like most people, when they start photography, they get like a nifty 50. Uh, nifty 50 is a 50 millimeter lens aperture 1.8. And this is a Nikon camera, and this was my one of my first low aperture lenses. Now, low aperture lenses do come with a cost depending on you know what, where you go. If you have a Sony camera, you can get a Sony, you can get Sony lenses, but you can also get Sigma, Tamron, uh, Samyang. I use a lot of Samyang lenses. They might be they're a lot cheaper, uh, cheaper built, but they give you a really good image, and that's all you really want at the end of the day. If you want blurry background and not, and you don't want to break the bank, take a look at the uh, my description. I actually made a list of some really good uh, budget-friendly low aperture lenses for different camera models. And yeah, take a look down there and we're going to move on to the next section, which is lenses. And I know you're like, yeah, but we talked about aperture. Get a lens with a low aperture. There's a little bit more to that. Let's get on to the next segment. All right. So right now, this is a 50 millimeter F 1.4 lens. Notice how the shot changes. The background is basically obliterated. It's completely gone. Uh, before I was shooting with a 20, 20 millimeter F 1.8. Now I'm shooting with a 50 millimeter F 1.4. That 20, it's pretty wide. Like you can't even see my arms in here. And the 50 is very tight. So the tighter the lens, the more compressed the background gets. So you want it tight and you want the aperture lower. So that's, I mean, it depends on your setups, right? So right now, this is not ideal for how I would normally shoot. But originally, I loved this look. I loved how tight this shot was. It super clean backgrounds basically gone but yeah i love shooting with a wider angle so i, I opted to use a, a 20 20 millimeter or I like to use a 45 millimeter samyang lens that way i can get more of the room now when i'm doing a podcast when i'm interviewing my clients yes i love having this look where they're like on the side yes john I started my agricultural journey when I was 14 years old and I was in high school. You know, that's, this is a really nice look for that. But if it's a one-on-one -on -one YouTube segment, this is a little too, a little too tight. It's very documentary style, but let's get back to 
this lens because I liked the way this looks. All right, so right now we're back on the 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens. Now you can see, I can see my hands, the background is here. Even though the aperture is set to a 1.8 aperture, pretty close to a 1.4, the background is still kind of a little in focus, but as I move closer, yeah, you'll notice how the background just fades away. So the closer I get, the more compressed the background is. So the more further I get, the background becomes more in focus. So as I get closer and closer and closer, the background starts to fade into obscurity. All right. So, so now we understand the different lenses and how they have an effect on the overall look. Now let's talk about background. The background is just as important as your aperture because the further away you are from your background, the more blurry the background gets and the more focused you will be, thus causing there to be like some depth. And if you look back there, it kind of gives you like a nice bokeh. Bokeh is like a term for the blurry background and looks really good. So now if I get closer to the background, like if I'm back here, it doesn't, it doesn't look the same. But as I get closer, you notice now the background looks a lot more interesting. Like you can have a whole heap of mess in the background, but when it's blurred out, it looks really good. Like, you know, you can have like a, a whole bunch of computers on the back over there. You can have candles being lit and it makes your background look a lot cooler than it actually does. It looks super, I don't want to use the word cinematic, but it makes it look super, super cinematic. If you can touch your background, you're too close. <laughs> if you want to have a blurry background and you can physically touch your background, you're, you're way too close. You need to create some separation. You need to get closer to the camera. You need to put your background further away. And also there are other things that I didn't really think about up until now. You have to have some interesting things in the background that will illustrate that there is some separation. Like I have this light where now it looks, my background looks pretty boring now, but now that I have this light, it's, you understand that there is some separation, meaning I'm further away from that. But if I get closer, you don't really see it as much and it's not as it's not as sexy. It doesn't look too, it doesn't look good when it's closer. So the further away, the sexier the, the background gets. That's pretty much it. <laughs> I don't know. That's like the a random thought that I just thought of just now. Like it looks really good here. Or before I get going, make sure that you actually go to the description and click the link. It's a Google Docs. I will be listing all of the budget friendly lenses, different manufacturers. That way you don't have to break the bank to get a blurry background. Like you don't have to go broke to have a blurry background. All right. So be sure to click the link in the description y'all and uh, we'll, we'll get you situated. All right. Uh, if y'all have any more questions, if you have like podcast production questions, if you have uh, YouTube studio questions, please comment down below. And uh, I have more videos to help y'all. All right. And if you're interested in getting more help, there is a link to my Patreon where I kind of go in depth with a lot of things. All right, y'all. So stay tuned for the next video. Like, comment, subscribe. Peace.